हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सी एस एन आई टी ट्यूटोरियल वाइवरेशली इन अवर प्रीवियस सम सेशन आई हैव गिवन यू सम इजी ट्रिक्स टू सॉल्व द एग्जांपल ऑफ सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिदम वी हैव डिस्कस हाउ टू सॉल्व एफ सी एफ एस एंड एस जे एफ शेड्यूलिंग एग्जाम्पल्स आई हैव अटैच अ कंप्लीट ओ एस प्लेलिस्ट लिंक इन बिलो डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स नाउ इन टूडे सेशन वी विल डिस्कस one of the most important topic for your exam point of view that is shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm here we will discuss about how to solve the examples let's start the session so previously we have already discussed all these subjects in detail with examples and practical demonstration please share my channel with your friends and subscribe it so that will be beneficial for everyone so we will discuss all these topics in today's session at the end we will discuss some important question bank that will be useful for your examination now the first thing is what are the different types of scheduling algorithm as we discussed earlier there is a scheduler in operating system scheduler decide the time of each and every process for the execution now previously we have discussed fcfs with solve example and also SJF with solve example i have attached link of both videos in below description box as per your exam point of view all these examples are important so prepare accordingly the first question is what exactly shortest remaining time first c operating system follows the multitasking or multi processing environment here cpu executed multiple process at a same time and this concept also called as preemptive scheduling algorithm right now the name suggests that shortest remaining time first means those process having the shortest burst time or shortest execution time that process executed by the cpu first this is a concept of srtf algorithm they follow the rule of sjf but it is in preemptive manner preemptive manner means c cpu executed p1 for one unit of time after that they have executed p2 for one unit of time in this way means they have executed multiple process or they serve multiple process parallelly equally this is a concept of srtf algorithm and this concept generally used in some batch processing operating system some embedded system or in some real time system now let's see how to solve the examples before solving example you must know about some basic terminologies we have already discussed all these terminologies in detail in previous session so let's take some quick revision of it the first thing which is called as arrival time of particular process when process has created in new state and goes to ready state for the execution so which is called as arrival time of particular process next one is a burst time burst time means actual time required for the execution to the particular process next one is completion time when process complete their execution and goes to terminated state this is called as completion time of particular process then what is turn around time total time from arrival to completion which is called as turn around time and the formula is completion time minus arrival time next one is a waiting time due to some allocation reason process goes to the waiting state when process waits for it allocation which is called as waiting time the formula is turn around time minus burst time next one is response time when cpu is allocated to the particular process first time which is called as response time and at the end there is a gan chart gan chart means visualization chart they display scheduling of each and every process means their arrival time their completion time in diagrammatical manner which is called as gan chart so let's see so this type of example have asked in your university exam and gate exam also so prepare accordingly now the first step is you need to analyze which data is given and which data you need to find out see here in this particular table first there are process numbers are given there are total four process p1 p2 p3 and p4 right 
अराइवल टाइम इज गिवन लाइक पी वन इज अराइव एट वन पी टू इज अराइव एट थ्री पी थ्री इज अराइव एट टू एंड पी फोर इज अराइव एट जीरो लेट्स अज्यूम दैट पी टू इज अराइव एट थ्री थ्री मीन्स थ्री ओ क्लॉक टू मीन्स टू ओ क्लॉक इन दिस वे इट इज इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ अगेन बर्स टाइम इज गिवन बर्स टाइम मीन्स एक्चुअल टाइम इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द एक्सिक्यूशन सो P1 required one unit of time for the execution. P2 required two unit of time. P3 required one unit of time, and P4 required again four unit of time for the execution. So this data has given. Now you need to find out completion time, turn around time, waiting time, response time. Again, average turn around time and average waiting time. So this type of question have asked for eight to nine marks. in your university exam so let's see how to solve this the first step is you need to draw the gantt chart gantt chart basically visualization chart of your process now it always start with the zero now check here in this particular table which process has come at zero unit of time p4 right so cpu executed which process first p4 so cpu executed p4 first now remember one thing suppose there is a example of srtf or sjf preemptive scheduling algorithm so always remember this thing here cpu executed each and every process only one unit of time at a time right remember this thing see here at 0 o'clock p4 process has come right what is their burst time Four unit of time, but CPU executed only one unit of time at a time. So how much time is remaining? Three unit of time is remaining. Clear. This is the first step. Now again check. At one o'clock or between zero to one, which process has come? At one o'clock, P one is there, right? And at zero, P four is there. Means there are total two process now. P one and P four. now check which process has the smallest burst time p1 burst time is 1 and p4 burst time is 3 which one is the smallest 1 right so after that cpu executed p1 process how much time for one unit of time so 1 plus 1 equal to 2 clear but now here this p1 process have already one unit of time for execution so cpu executed p1 process the time is complete so p1 process have completely executed now right now again check at 2 o'clock or between 0 to 2 which process has come so at 2 o'clock p3 is there and between 0 to 2 p4 is there right p1 have already executed now so there are total two process p3 and p4 now check which process has the smallest burst time p3 their burst time is 1 and p4 their burst time is 3 which one is the smallest 1 right so now cpu executed p3 for process first so 1 plus 2 equal to 3 now p3 process have completed they complete their execution because they required only one unit of time there is no any other remaining time clear now again check at 3 o'clock or between 0 to 3 which process has come so at 3 o'clock p2 is there right and between 0 to 3 p4 is there right now p1 and p3 has complete their execution so there is only two process p2 and p4 now check which process has the smallest burst time p2 their burst time is 2 and p4 their burst time is 3 which one is the smallest 2 so cpu executed p2 process first how much time one unit of time like 3 plus 1 equal to 4 but actually what time they required two unit of time so from that two unit of time one unit of time have already executed and the remaining time is 1 clear now again check at 4 o'clock or between 0 to 4 which process has come see at 4 o'clock there is no any other process now check between 0 to 4 there are total two process p1 
P2 is there, right? And P4 is there. Means there are total two process, P2 and P4. Now check which process has the smallest burst time. P2, the burst time is 1 is remaining. And P4, 3 unit of time is remaining. So which one is the smallest? P2 process, right? So now CPU again executed P2 process for 1 unit of time. Like 4 plus 1 equal to 5. Now P2 process have complete their execution. There is no any other remaining time. Clear? Now again check. At 5 o'clock or between 0 to 5, which process has come? So at 5 o'clock, there is no any other process. And between 0 to 5, only one process is remaining, right? That is P4. So now CPU executed P4 completely. So what is the remaining burst time? 3 unit of time. So 5 plus 3 equal to 8. So CPU executed P4 process completely. Clear? So now P4 process also have completed. So in this way, SRTF algorithm execute each and every process only one unit of time. Clear? Now, as per this GAN chart, you need to calculate this value. See, first you need to find out the completion time. So what is the completion time of P1? See here, P1 has completed at the 2 o'clock. This is arrival time. This is completion time. So P1 completion time is 2. Now what is the completion time of P2? P2 completion time is 5. Then completion time of P3 is 3. And completion time of P4 is 8. Clear? Next to find out the turnaround time. And the formula is completion time minus arrival time. See? P1 process. Completion time is 2. Arrival time is 1. So 2 minus 1, 1. P2 process 5 minus 3 equal to 2. P3 process 3 minus 2 equal to 1. And P4 process 8 minus 0 equal to 8. Clear? So this is a turnaround time. Actual time required for the execution. Next one is a waiting time. The formula is turnaround time minus burst time. So waiting time of process 1 is turnaround time 1. And burst time is 1. So 1 minus 1, 0. Next one is P2 process 2 minus 2 equal to 0. Again P3 process turnaround time 1, burst time 1. So 1 minus 1 equal to 0. And P4 process turnaround time 8, burst time 4. And they are waiting time is 4 unit of time. Clear? This is called as waiting time. Now, the next one is a response time. Response time is actual time when CPU allocated to the particular process first time. And the formula is start time minus arrival time. See, what is the response time of P1? See, P1, their start time is 1 and their arrival time is 1. So, 1 minus 1 equal to 0. Similarly, P2 process. P2 process start time is 3. And their arrival time is 3. So 3 minus 3, 0. Again P3 process. Start time is 2. Arrival time is 2. So 2 minus 2 equal to 0. Again uh, now P4 process. Their start time is 5. And arrival time is. Uh, their start time is sorry. P4 process. Their start time is 0. Arrival time is 0. So 0 minus 0, 0. So in this way you need to identify. Or find out all these values. Now calculate the average turnaround time. So the formula is total turnaround time divided by total process. So total turnaround time that is 12. That is 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 8. So the answer is 12. And total process there are total 4 process. So 12 divided by 4 equal to 3. This is the 3 unit of time that is average turnaround time. Next one is the average waiting time. And the formula is total waiting time divided by total process. So total uh, waiting time, so calculate the addition of this, that is 4 divided by total process 4 and 4 divided by 4, that is 1. So average waiting time is 1 unit of time. So practice this example. This is one of the most important example for your exam point of view. Now, as per the previous year question paper, 
they asked about uh, this kind of question like uh, to consider the set of process these are the some set of process are given to find out arrival time burst time then average turn around time and average waiting time which type of algorithm sjf preemptive algorithm c sjf preemptive and srtf shortest remaining time first both are the same so use the same type of uh, concept for solving this example and uh, you need to also draw the gan chart here so in first question this type of data is given and again in some paper this kind of data is given so this question asked for 8 marks so practice this so thank you so much and stay tuned for my next video keep learning